Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Average Joe Sports for this weekend. Uh, first things first, uh, before, before we really get started uh, today, I'd like to uh, give a personal shout out to all you NFL football fans out there uh, starting on Thursday, the 4th of September, the 4th of September, yes it is September, on um, the 4th of September, uh, uh, professional football starts and it starts with uh, Seattle's champions of the football world, the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Green Bay Packers in Fail Mary Part 2. You guys may remember the Fail Mary as also known as the game that brought the NFL referees back so we can get back to regular everyday football. I highly doubt it's going to be like that this <clears throat> this time around. Um, I expect a good clean game and um, Hopefully that uh, the, the Seahawks can uh, can pull it out on on the night where they do the big flag unveiling, like where they raise the, raise the championship flag, give out the rings, and and the whole rig and roll and fall and roll of, of 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 that of that evening. So uh, commonly, this seems to be a, a game where the champions actually wind up losing, just because there's too much there's just too much stuff going on. But uh, here's hoping the Seahawks do it. Um, other other news from our Raiders: David Carr is getting the start over Matt Schaub. Uh, well, shop has been injured, and Carr is has been has been decent. He's still going to need, need to be very very mobile <clears throat> with that offensive line that's still kind of getting to know each other, and quite frankly, isn't that good yet. But possibly in the in the eventual future, uh, they will be. Anyway, but on to uh, other more important things like college football because it's awesome. Uh, Huskies last weekend. Uh, well. What can you say? You know, you're you're gonna have games like like we had <clears throat> against against Hawaii uh, on 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 occasion. It was it was it was, a, it was a tough game in the sense of we saw a tale of two completely different teams. We saw a really great efficient team in the first half uh, with with the dogs on offense, and then in the second half it just seemed like they stalled. Um, I, however, luckily. The uh, Hawaii, the Hawaii offense also stalled a little bit too. But uh, again, we'll get more into that uh, once we get into the actual preview. But again, uh, Jeff Lindquist did all right. We'll get into the stats here uh, in in a few minutes here. So uh, I guess it's on to the uh, preview for for this weekend. All right. So the dogs this week are in fact playing Eastern Washington University. Uh, Eastern Washington is located east of the mountains over here uh, in Cheney, if I remember correctly. Cheney is just a few hours uh, like nor northeast of, I'm sorry, uh, southeast of, uh, of Pullman. Gives you some semblance of, 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 of uh, per perspective. So uh, I could be completely wrong about that, but it's over on the east side of the mountains. That's all you need to know about. Um, Playing the Eastern Washington Eagles. So the way Eastern, uh, the, the last meeting that these two teams had was in 2011, where the Huskies won a very, very tight game out going out the gate 30-27 on a, on a miraculous, miraculous interception at the last second from one Desmond Trufant, which in a game where I, I said it before, we should have lost that game. We had no reason to win that game because we played like absolute crap. So, but that's all. But again, that's just my own opinion. I'm a little bit harsh on my team sometimes. It's because I love them. Um, uh, so last week, Eastern played uh, versus Montana Western. Uh, they clobbered the holy mess out of them, 41 to nine. Uh, let's see here. Quarterback Vernon Adams was 27 of 30 uh, for 360 yards and threw for five touchdowns. Needless to say, if this is the same team that we saw, you know, you know, a few a few years ago or two years ago to be exact. Um, they still like to throw the ball in the air. They're big on the offensive line. Uh, the quarter the quarterback's going to feel very very comfortable. Um, <clears throat> let's see here, uh, key rushers. Mario Brown had nine carries for 108 yards and one touchdown. The receivers, man, they just they just they just went off. Shaq Hill, six receptions, 116 yards and a touchdown. Corey Mitchell, uh, 10 receptions, 113 yards, and two touchdowns. And Kendrick Bourne, if I believe that's how his name is pronounced, uh, had six receptions for 89 yards and a touchdown as well. Main, main thing to say is this team likes to sling the ball around, and they've got multiple receivers to sling it around too. 
So uh, that's something that the Husky defense is going to have to be well prepared for. I think they can be. This team is a little bit smaller. Also, they may, they're, though they are a quick team, I don't think they're necessarily at Division One speed. But then again, it's Eastern. You're playing a local team in kind of a pseudo Washington rivalry kind of a game. I put this, uh, you know, as one of the key games in my preview last week uh, of the of the entire season at a glance. So uh, this game is very, very, very important because we don't want we don't want to lose to Eastern. We don't want to give Eastern and their fans those sort of bragging rights. Again, it's not to doubt them as a team. They're very, very good. On to what the Dogs did last week. Huskies, as we all know, played Hawaii. They won a very, very close game by, by one point, 17 to 16. Um, Jeff Lindquist was 10 of 26 for 100, uh, 162 yards and one touchdown. One touchdown was to uh, Mr. Ross. Uh, it was just, just a, it was, a, it was a beautiful pass actually, and uh, it, it looked like Linquist kind of, kind of locked in, the, locked in the starting role at least for the game going into, going into Eastern this week. But as, as I had said in the beginning of, of the vlog, that the offense kind of stalled, and I think Linquist thought, you know, and and, and Mr. Mr. And Terrence Ross that he could, he could get the ball to him on, on a regular basis. Um, he, it, 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 the offense as a whole slowed down under the under the uh, leadership of Mr. Jeff Lindquist. Uh, conversely, uh, uh, it'll actually be one Siler Miles, Siler Miles, uh, it's getting getting the start uh, against uh, Eastern this weekend. Hopefully, this will mean that the offense will run a whole lot smoother uh, with him on the helm. We got to remember also that. Uh, Siler Miles has fewer practice time, fewer practice snaps with the starting lineup as Jeff Lindquist, because as we know, he got into a minor altercation on, on, on during, the, during the Super Bowl, and uh, another, uh, I can't remember the other player's name, but he got kicked off the team, he's been removed from the team. Siler Miles, basically, from what I was able to read, was just kind of at the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, he was willing to deal with it, and then his buddy kind of had his back, and He's kind of guilty by association, so with that, he got suspended for spring practices, and he got suspended also for the first game of the season. And all in all, I think it sets a tone for the rest of the team that you know, just because you're a starter doesn't doesn't mean you get special privileges. Um, and and you know, to, but you know, at the same time, that I thought the punishment might have been a little too steep, just because he just happened to be there at the time that the fight went down. So. Again, it is what it is. He's getting a start, so we'll see how it's going to play out here uh, in 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 the first. And really, in the first quarter, we're going to see how how well and how quickly he, Siler Miles can can pick up the playbook uh, that that Coach Peterson has has for him. But on to the actual stats from uh, from last weekend. Lindquist again went 10-26, 162 yards, one one throwing touchdown. And then we had Le Levon or Le'Veon. Coleman, 17 carries for 78 yards rushing, and then you had Dwayne Washington, 12 carries, uh, 38 yards, and uh, John Ross actually was kind of the star of the night. He had one receiving touchdown, he also had one rushing touchdown uh, as well on, on a very interesting reverse slash end around. Looked like a play that actually got broken up, and Ross happened to be in the right place at the right time and was able to get around to the end and, and get into the end zone for the first touchdown. Of uh, well, actually, for the second touchdown of the game, first touchdown for the dogs. Um, another key stat that I'm uh, that is interesting, and, and when you look at it in comparison to uh, Coach Sarkeesian and Coach Peterson, Coach Peterson is 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 a proponent of discipline, both on offense and on defense. Ironically, uh, the, de the defense did just enough to win the game this week. They weren't, they didn't do anything spectacular. No real, no real turnovers. They were just able to get into the trenches and stop Hawaii. That was actually doing a very, very good job at uh, at running the field and moving the ball down the field all the whole game. Um, but uh, ironically, uh, the Husky team as a whole uh, showed some great discipline. They only uh, had five penalties for a total of 35 yards. That's that that is huge. I mean, we don't want to take unnecessary penalties, but five penalties for 35 yards. All right, so you know you, you figure two of them were delay of games, so they were they were kind of guard their delay of games on 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 the on special teams. So that's 
special teams needs, needs to get tightened up. But again, first game out, I figured something like that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, five penalties, 35 yards. Listen, that's a couple offsides, penalties, and and and, and, and a holding. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not that's not anything terrible. That those those are penalty yards that we can we as a team can come back from. But you know, when you have 36 penalties for you know 118 yards, listen, you're putting yourself you're putting your team in a hole all the time because all you're doing is giving giving your opponent home field or home field advantage. Uh, uh, just you know a shorter field to play with. And yeah, as we all know, you give give a quarterback short field, he's gonna he's nine times out of ten he's gonna score on you. So um, all in all, looking looking at the stats here, um, God, it's 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 tough for me to say this is gonna be uh, you know an absolute route because I don't believe so because with a team like Eastern, much like any of your local smaller you know Division One AA schools. Uh, a lot of a lot of those a lot of those kids on the on the team. It was their it's their it's their dream to play for the big schools in Division One. In this case, it's UW and, and and Wazoo. And a lot of these kids, for one reason or another, did not get a chance to uh, go to either one of these schools. So you're looking at a team with a bunch of players that have everything to gain and nothing to lose. You know that's very very much so an Appalachian state. Sort of a situation. So hopefully the dogs can hunker down and get this win. I do feel that like this is going to be a win, but I think it's going to be another close one, probably by three. Uh, is, it would be my guess. So, um, so yeah, my pre my preview again. Uh, dogs win in in a very very tight one, and uh, that that's about it. Go dogs, go Raiders, go Seahawks because you guys got the first game, got the mark, got the marquee matchup. Get it done. Let's do it. Peace out.